Hi, I'm Seb Ben Yaakov. This presentation is entitled in An Intuitive Introduction to Phase Shifted Full Bridge Converters. And also, I'm trying to decipher this uh, perhaps a mystery to some. What is this meaning of a leading and trailing legs uh, in this uh, phase shifted uh, full bridge converter? So here is the basic configuration or topology of this converter. We have a full bridge, we have a transformer, and then we have a output inductor. It is like a full bridge PWM converter. There are two differences here. One is the way the modulation is done. Here it is by sort of shifting. We'll talk about it in a minute. And then there is an inductor here. It has to be. And if the leakage is not enough, then one has to add an inductor for the reason we'll see later on. And this inductor is really enabling soft switching of all the switches. So let's start with this issue of this uh, phase shifted. What is this phase shifted? If we have the two half bridges, the right and left, this one and this one, and if they are switching together, that is when this one is high and this one is high, when this one is low, and low and then uh, this high and this high and these are low, then the voltage x to y that is at the input of the transformer is zero because there is no potential difference. To power it, you have to have say one on and this one on, okay? If this one is on and this one is on, then again you have zero. So to get uh, power, you have to have this one on, of course this one will be off at that time, and this one on, and then you have power going into the transformer. But if these two are switching together, then there is zero voltage at the input of the transformer. And this is this situation. I'm showing the right side, I'm showing the left side, and then between uh, the X and Y, that is the input to the transformer, there is no voltage. However, if I shift one of them, then what we see is that now we have situation in which we have one half bridge high, the other one is low, so it there is a voltage now at the input to the transformer. And then on the other hand, if this one is high and the left side and this one is low, we are also going to have a voltage to the transformer, but of opposite polarity. So this phase shifting that is moving the, tr the timing of one half bridge with respect to the other is causing this output, which looks like PWM modulation. It is PWM modulation, but it is created by this phase shift rather than a triangular waveform and uh, comparator, etc., as we are used to in some other converter. But the beauty of this uh, converter is really the soft switching, which we'll talk about later on. But let me clarify here something which is very important, and I think it's sort of a mystery to some. So what is this leading and trailing legs? I've shown earlier this configuration. Now notice that the pulse at the output starts when this right side is turning high. When this one is low and this one is low, there is no output, as we've seen before. However, due to the shift, we have now a situation that this one is high, while the left side is low, and therefore we have a voltage. So this right half bridge is initiating, and it is leading this pulse here, and causing this pulse at the output. Same thing goes for the other transition of this right half bridge, you see that the negative also starts when this goes out because before it goes out this one is high and this one is high and then, it, then only when it goes low we get this other polarity. The function of this uh, left side is really the turn off because we see that in this situation we have a pulse and then when the left side is then coming to be a high voltage or high potential, then 
there is again no voltage difference between these two and we get a zero. So in this situation we have the right starting the pulse, the left ending the pulse. Okay? Now if I shift it the other way around, then I can get it to the situation in which the left is starting the pulse, okay? Because it is now leading, and the right is ending it. Here it is. This is the right is ending it. And always the left is starting the pulse, both the positive and the negative. So we have one side which is power and leading, and the other side which is, I call it idling and lagging. But it's not a question if it is the right half bridge or the left half bridge. It is the question how are these operated. So we can make this side to be leading or this side to be leading depending on the phase shift between them. So let me just summarize. The leading leg is the one that actually is powering or starting the pulse, the lagging, is the one that actually ends the pulse. And again, it's not a question of right to left, it's a question of how these pulses are shifted. Let me now go to the more important part, and that is the soft switching. So I'm starting the explanation assuming that QC is conducting and QB is also conducting. So we have a powering situation. We are here, QC is high, okay? and then QB is also high, so this is on and this is on, and therefore we have now the powering stage. Now at this time, there is a voltage coming into the transformer, there is an output voltage, so therefore one of the diodes say this one is conducting, and therefore there is a current here flowing, and we are actually now charging uh, this inductor, and also charging this inductor, and the current of this inductor is actually reflected to the primary. So what we see here, the primary, is the reflected current of the secondary. And now we move from the powering to the so-called idling, we see what it is, and at this point we turn off QB. QB was conducting, and now we turn it off. When we turn it off, we have the current still passing here, still reflected from the output, and at this stage, this current will start charging these two capacitors. This one is off, this one has been off, and it's still off. We need now some dead time before we turn on the upper one, of course, and at this time, the capacitor are being charged, and the voltage here is sort of self-commutating from the low side to the high side and then the diode will catch okay at this point we can turn on this transistor here qa at zero voltage switching okay this is the real zero voltage switching this turn off is i call it pseudo zero voltage switching because if the current is dropping fast, that I have a fast turn off, then the voltage here will start rising, but there is a delay or there is a slope due to the capacitances. So therefore the overlap between the current of this transistor and the voltage are minimal, depending on the size of the capacitor and of course the magnitude of the current. So this is sort of a poor boy zero voltage switching. It's not a hard switching, but it's not a full-fledged zero voltage switching. On the other hand, here, when I turn on this transistor, it is zero voltage switching, okay? So now I have this transistor turned on, and now this current is circulating here. I call it an idling stage. The voltage here is zero. So there is no preference for any one of the diodes because there is no potential here. So both of them are actually conducting and causing actually a short here. So there is a short here. There is of course current in this inductor, which is then still feeding the output. But the voltage here is zero. 
at the input. Then this current of the inductor, which started with the reflected current of the secondary, is now starting to drop a little bit because of the resistances. If the short would be an ideal short, then the current will not change. Okay? If there is a short on an inductor which is carrying current and there is no resistance, the current theoretically will continue as it is. But due to this uh, resistance, there is a drop. So we have energy here in this inductor, which is sort of tapering off. And this is this idling stage. Here we have losses due to the fact that there is no power going to the output, but still there is a dissipation of these two transistors. This is the sore point of the phase shifted full bridge converter. This is the downside of it, this loss here. Now we are ready to move to the other powering stage. And for that, we turn off this transistor, okay? Again, this transistor is turned off at pseudo zero voltage switching because if we turn it fast, the voltage is dropping relatively slower due to the capacitances. So there is this uh, pseudo zero voltage switching. At this stage, the energy required to charge this capacitor is coming solely from this inductor. So this inductor has to be large enough so that the energy in it will be sufficient to charge these two capacitors. Now obviously a converter like this will always have a sort of a low limit uh, under which you are losing the soft switching because eventually if the power is very low, the current is low, then there won't be enough energy to do the transition. So this is kind of a boundary you have to worry about, then you have to decide sort of a compromise be between this and the region at which you are losing the soft switching. Furthermore, if this inductor is large, then it'll take a long time to reverse the current because we need to reverse the current. At this stage, this current goes this way. Once we'll have powering stage again to the other direction, the current has to switch over. Consequently, it takes time for this current to switch over. So if the inductor is very large, you need a very large dead time, which is kind of limiting the duty side. So it's also a consideration, aside from the fact that a large inductor, of course, is costly, etc. So now we finished this process and we are at this stage in which we still have some current going this direction. I, we turn on this transistor, but now we have plus voltage. But now we have a plus voltage here, a minus here, and therefore the current will reverse. Okay, and so it takes this time for this reversal, okay, from here to here. And therefore, as I've said, if the inductor is too large, we are losing time, we'll have to increase the dead time. So let me summarize this short presentation. We have seen the concept of the phase shifted PWM, and also I covered this issue of soft switching, which is, of course, the highlight of this converter. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.